what's up everybody it's your favorite awkward youtuber back at it again once a year um except this time this this video is going to be pretty unique and you probably clicked on this because you saw the title um which has something to do with 10 tips 10 uh, bullet points of advice on how to succeed at BYU how to prepare for BYU you know, I'll come up with the title eventually. <laughs> but basically, I was sitting here thinking and, you know, obviously going through YouTube, um, looking at other people's videos, and I was like, I wish I had um, a video that just like very briefly, very basically described a couple of things that I could do to help me prepare for college. Uh, specifically BYU, but this can apply to basically any college. None of these are like religion related um, or like BYU admissions related, so if you're looking uh, for something like that, then you'll probably have to find a different video. And um, real quick, if you find this video helpful, then at the end, leave a comment down below and let me know if you'd like me to make more videos, because I um, I feel like I'm a very relatable BYU student, because I, I'm not the top of my class at anything, I'm not the bottom, but I'm not the top, I'm kind of like mediocre in the middle, just kind of here. Um, and I'm not one of those amazing musicians, um, or, like, prodigies. I'm just a normal person at BYU, so. Anyway, 10 things to help you succeed at BYU, or whatever title I decide to put on this video. Uh, number one, get organized. And I, I cannot stress this enough. I will show you, first of all, in high school, I, I did everything the day before. All of my assignments, I never kept track, I didn't look at the syllabus because if you're coming to BYU, you're probably one of those students who found high school really easy. Um, but no matter what college you're going to, you should recognize that college is way different than high school. Um, so anyway, I was not organized in high school. And so now coming to BYU, I figured out very quickly that it's way more helpful to get organized and you know it might take some experimentation to figure out um, what works better for you there's obviously lots of digital formats lots of apps you could probably download with like different calendars and things like that um, I'm a very much a handwritten person so like even if my phone cracks and dies I'm not without my schedule um, so I have two main ways that I stay organized and they both kind of work together so this first one is a very plain black planner. It's only this thick because um, it's just a monthly planner. And I use this one as like my overview for my semester. I'm gonna turn so you can see it, but basically this is August, no, September, wow. November does not come after August. Well, it does, but not like Im immediately after. And anyway, September is uh, when we started classes. And so I kind of mark when classes start because it's very visual like okay go and like yeah um, and then I go through each syllabus you should get online access to your classes about a week or so before classes actually start and you can go online you can see all of the due dates for your assignments for the entire semester and this is what I do to keep myself on top of things I go through and I mark when every single assignment is due and I mark little orange places where I'm having tests um, so that I can work up to them. And then this red thing was like a scholarship. And then BYU specifically has 15 weeks each semester. And so I number each week so that I can count them off because I struggle. Um, it's a good time trying to keep up midterms. Anyway, yeah. Um, I mark off all of my breaks, so the very few breaks that we have at BYU, um, and then you have finals week, and then Christmas break is open. So monthly planners is my first step, laying out all of those assignments um, for the whole semester, right at the beginning of the semester so that I know, kind of like, I can see the patterns of which days are going to be my heavy days, and then I can create that mindset and just like prepare myself uh, for that those harder classes or those harder days with more assignments. And you will have more homework that takes more effort and more time um, in college than you probably had in high school. So just be aware of that. 
Um, the second tool that I use to get organized is my weekly planner. And it changes every week. Sometimes it looks like this, or sometimes it looks like this, or this. You know, it just, I kind of have this, you know, color coordinated thing. But basically, at the end of every week, um, I go through and I mark when all of my classes are, when the like labs I need to go to, um, and then in the blank spaces, I put like homework that I can schedule to work on. And that has helped me stay on top of my homework so much better than I ever did before. I also mark what number of the week it is um, so that I know when I'm halfway and when I'm three quarters of the way because I really need that encouragement, low key. Um, anyway, this one is actually the planner that you get through BYU. So freshmen get these for free if you go see your peer mentor in the hub. Um, at the conclusion of student new student orientation, which I highly recommend that you go to. Um, I went to it, and then this year I was a group leader for it. Um, and so I found it extremely helpful. So there's a bonus one for you. Get organized. Um, I plan them week by week, so I refer to my big, big picture calendar. And then I record all of my assignments that I need to do. And that is number one, get organized. Um, then you can cross off everything. Crossing off checks, check boxes are, it's just, it's so satisfying to me. It feels like you've done something. It helps you feel better about yourself when you're like feeling overwhelmed. Um, and yeah, it helps you keep on top of like important dates and things like that. Um, number two, learn to study. This goes along, right along with, um, classes that are going to be harder in college than in high school, you have to study differently. If you didn't struggle in high school, you probably were someone like me who busted out a paper um, and just turned it in without any revisions and did pretty pretty okay. Um, and I did not know how to study when I came down here. Um, and it wasn't until I took a really hard class in my second semester that I finally figured out how to sit down and study just a little bit every day. Even if you only do 15 minutes for each class that you go to, it helps so much because your brain is creating those little memories, those little like recollection tools that help you during a test. And it's so, so much better than, than cramming uh, before a test. So just learn to study. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of different ways to do it. Handwritten notes I find are infinitely better than writing on your laptop, even though it's faster your brain remembers the information better, uh, like some scientific number, a lot better when you write it out by hand. So I always get a big notebook and I just write as many notes as I can. You listen to the professor. Um, you can go to professor's um, office hours and talk with them. You can go to um, TA meetings, TA hours, and talk with your teaching assistant and they're great at helping you learn how to study so that you can learn the material instead of just memorizing it for the tests. So that was another thing. The third thing is super simple. Everyone told me to do it when I was getting ready to come to college and I didn't listen <laughs> and now I struggle with it. But number three is go to class. <laughs> In college, a lot of your classes are not going to take attendance. And so a lot of people are like, well, I shouldn't have to go to class if I don't want to. So a lot of people don't want to, and a lot of people don't. And I'm one of those people. <laughs> um, just get it in your mind that this is an investment that you're making, no, and it's going to end. You aren't going to do this forever. Unless you're trying to become a college professor, and then I'm sorry, you're going to have to do this forever. <laughs> but for most people, going to class is a temporary thing, and sometimes you're gonna have to go when you don't want to. You're gonna have to say no to adventures and trips your friends are going on. You're going to have to limit yourself. You're gonna have to go to bed on time. Oh my goodness, go to bed on time. Just go to sleep. But go to class. That is where you learn the best. That's where the teacher, like the professors and the doctors that are there working, trying to teach this to you, that this class that you signed up for, that's where literally basically the whole hour if nothing more, they are verbally giving you the answers to any test question you might have. Um, and that's how I see it sometimes. That's how I have to see it sometimes. Go to class. Number four, if possible, and I know this isn't the case for everyone, 
but if possible, cook your own food. Buy your own groceries, cook your own food. Build up a food storage. Um, I know this is very difficult for people who live in dorms and so you're excused, um, but for most people, it's so much cheaper to cook your own food. Buy groceries, create a cute little menu plan, um, put it in your schedule, put it in your scheduling if you want. That would actually be really helpful as well. But if you cook your own food, you save so much money. Um, you, it's healthier, you save money, you can cook more so you can cook with friends. Um, and it's just, it's easier, healthier, more cost effective. Um, so, plus it's really great life skill to just know how to cook food and prepare food. Um, and it's kind of like a bragging right like if you learn how to nail a certain dish in college um, then you can bring it to any church activity any family home evening night you might have any any family gathering you can bring your famous college dish and be like oh yes i nailed this dish because i lived off of it in college cook your own food that's the gist of it number five number five is something i never heard anyone tell me until I got to college and I learned it myself the hard way. Freshmen come, coming into college, especially BYU, if you come in with a lot of scholarships, save them. Do not spend your scholarship money because if you have a lot of scholarships and school is not very expensive for you, like tuition is pretty low, like at BYU, um, you're gonna you're gonna come out of the first month of school with a lot of extra funds because you had a lot of scholarships. I came to BYU with a lot of scholarships and so I had a lot of extra funds. Um, but I didn't put hardly any of it into savings and I definitely took them for granted. And so now I am well into my second year and I am wishing, wishing, wishing that I just put them away and saved them saved my scholarships because I had way less scholarships. It comes, it's pretty normal. You have self-terminating scholarships, like they're only good for one or two semesters. They, they don't amount to a lot, even though every scholarship is beneficial. And I guess a note with that is like, apply for a lot of scholarships. I applied for probably 35. I got maybe like 11 and they were all, you know, different scholarships. Uh, like levels or amounts and then of those 11 I'm from out of state I'm from Idaho and so only some of them applied to BYU like five or six so just apply for a lot and it gets repetitive and it sucks but it's so worth it to have those funds and it's even better if you save them so please if you do nothing else and get nothing else from this video please save your extra funds for later you will be so happy that you did. Okay, um, we're halfway done. Number six, hard classes. If you're taking hard classes, pre-study for them. And this was something else that I didn't get from any other video, um, but I kind of figured out this semester I'm taking human anatomy. If you want me to do a, a video just on preparing for BYU human anatomy, I will happily do that, just drop that in the comments. Um, PD Bio 220 um, is what I'm taking. But anyway, if you have hard classes coming up that semester, like if you do registration over the summer and you're waiting for false classes to start um, and you know that they're gonna be hard classes, go on to any online resource. Um, I use a lot of Khan Academy and then like just general YouTube videos and learn the basics. For human anatomy, I did a lot of pre-study. I learned, I guess I didn't learn because I already knew it, but I retrained myself, familiarized myself with the very basics, like um, the bodies, the systems of the body and like the skeleton and the basic bones in the skeleton because you go way more in depth in human anatomy. Um, and I did a couple of like stats pre-study um, and just different things to help my brain start thinking about the material. And you know, you don't have to memorize anything, but literally just like playing it in the background while you're cleaning your room or doing something like that, listening to material that's related, anything that can help you recall things instead of trying to memorize new information is going to help you in the hard classes. 
Um, and that will be especially relevant uh, the week before classes or as soon as you get your syllabus. Do pre-study. Pre-study, pre-study, pre-study. It doesn't have to be a lot. Anything helps. Okay, that brings me to point number seven. Do not get psyched out by what other people say about hard classes. Okay, there are classes that are hard in college. It's different than high school. That's how it is. But don't let yourself get psyched out. This was a huge problem for me my second semester because I took American Heritage and everyone talks about American Heritage at BYU and how horrible it is and how awful it is, how hard it is. And the average in that class is a B. And first of all, Bs are not bad. Bs are amazing, especially at BYU. <laughs> it's like, ugh, mediocre Hannah talking for a second. It's so hard for me to get A's. It's so hard. The classes are meant to be hard. They're meant to make you sweat for those days. But before I even started American Heritage, I was talking with people who were like, oh my gosh, it's so hard. I literally failed every single test and I got terrified. I was so psyched out and stressed out about this class that I hadn't even taken yet. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to fail. And if you walk into a class with a mindset or the already accepting the fact that you're going to fail the class, how are you supposed to get an A out of that? How are you supposed to have the, the courage or feel the motivation to work hard when you feel like you're going to fail already? American Heritage actually ended up being one of my favorite classes. It's a lot of material and there's readings and it's, you know, it can take some time. But American Heritage is just, it's just about politics and it's about learning how people work and how to set up a country so that it runs well. And there's lots of different opinions that you get to read about, lots of historical characters. And I thought it was really interesting and I really enjoyed it. And once I started focusing on the material instead of the things that people said about it, I had a lot better success and a lot more fun. I enjoyed the class so much more. Also. American Heritage, if you're taking it, go to every single review you can because the TAs help so much. They have all day reviews and they just help you understand it so much better. They just make it like dumb it down to like my level of English. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, so that was number seven. Number eight is, oh, they're all important. They're all important, but number eight, make time to relax. If you are a hardworking person, if you are a person who's always involved in everything, if you are a person who needs to work all the time, who doesn't sleep very much, who is always studying, aka I'm basically just drawing off of everything that I deal with, um, take time to relax. You don't have to be doing homework 24-7 just to succeed in that class and do nothing else. It's so important for your mental health, for your physical health, for your emotional, social, intellectual, etc, 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 psychological, all of the different types of healths, health things, health, different health things. It's so, so important to just, even if it's just like for an hour each evening, just step away from the computer, step away from your phone, step away from anything that you have to study to know, and I don't know, Watch a movie that you don't have to be graded on or read a book. Read a good book. Find a good book and read it. Check out a hard copy of a book from the library. The library is there and has tons of books. You can read it forever until you graduate and you won't read all those books. You might be able to learn something new. You know, it's you just take a break from homework. Take a break, you know cook some food, or put on your favorite socks, or go on a walk outside, just, you know, and remember to enjoy the little things because this is your life. College, you know, there's classes, and there's work, and there's homework, but this is your life, and you need to have things that are not college, that are still a part of your life. That is so important. Um, nine, I kind of already... Um, went into this a little bit. It's talking more about the stressful side of life sometimes for exams, midterms, tests, and finals. 
attend as many reviews as possible. TA reviews are really good at dumbing down the information if you feel like it's too much to handle in class. <laughs> Human anatomy. <laughs> it's so complicated. TAs are really good at making it clearer. They're there to answer your questions, so come with questions. And attend as many as possible because those are going to focus you in on what you need to know for the tests and help you learn it in a way that you can understand. And I'll go over it with you a thousand times until you get it right until you understand what it is they're talking about and it'll take some time, it'll take effort and work it'll be like going to a class when you don't have to go to a class but just that little bit of effort will make such a big difference and help you kind of with any test anxiety you may have it helps de-stress and it helps you avoid cramming so that's a great thing okay my last point uh, and this is kind of a jumble of everything else that you've probably already heard about college and BYU and just getting ready to move on to like post-secondary education. Get out of your comfort zone. You know, if you have time in your schedule and the energy to do so, get involved with a student club, make some friends, and just, just, you're literally just learning who you are and you're just learning what you like and what you don't like and you're learning what your personal limits are and you just get out of your comfort zone. Learn what you like, learn what you don't like. Make friends with people from all over the world because there's no better place than college when everybody's in the, at the same place in life. Either you've just graduated high school to you've just gotten married, right in that little tiny like four or five years of each other. You guys are all going through the same thing. You guys can all sympathize, you all share similar stories. So just make friends with really cool people and hang out with them. Do that part of like making time to relax, hang out with those people. Um, getting out of your comfort zone is another part of this is your life. College is a part of your life, but college is not your whole life. And I forget that all the time. So, you know, maybe it'll just be me watching this video over and over again to remind myself that college is only a part of my life, but it's, so important and I've made some really good friends here you've probably seen Amelia and Jennifer in my old posts or my old videos and they've just become some of my closest friends um, that I know I'm gonna keep around in my life for a really long time and I just I am slowly learning that college is only a part of my life and that I need to get out of my comfort zone um, in order to enjoy it to have fun and to maybe discover some things about myself that I didn't already know. Anyway, that's my 10 tips, things, advice, bullet points about BYU, college, universities, etc. Get organized, learn to study, go to class, cook food for yourself, save your scholarships. If you have hard classes, do some pre-study. Don't get psyched out about the hard classes. Make time to relax, read a book, walk away from technology, attend as many reviews as you can in preparation for tests, and get out of your comfort zone. Um, another little bonus thing about BYU, a lot of people are really good at what they do. When you get here, you may feel like all of a sudden you are no good at what you do because everyone here plays the piano really good. Everyone here can draw really well. Everyone seems to be super in shape all the time and things like that and I know a lot of uh, other universities are very similar um, so I would just say just recognize you're not the only one who might feel mediocre and you still have an identity that is very unique and very important um, I think that's that's all I have um, concerning that but just just yeah just come um, with, the, uh, with the goal to be your authentic self and don't be hard on yourself if you don't feel like you measure up to other people's skill level um, because I can almost guarantee you that there's going to be something about you that's unique that they can do and that's part of what makes this community so positive is like we can all connect to those unique experiences but anyway that's the conclusion of my video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please let me know um, by leaving a like. 
Um, if you want more videos about BYU, BYU classes, um, I'll put a list in the description below of all of the classes I've taken so far and the ones I'm taking this semester. And if you would like a specific video on how to prepare for those classes, let me know um, and I can make those for you. My videos are going to be pretty few and far between because I am a full-time college student. Um, I can also talk about working on campus, uh, night jobs, early morning jobs, on-call jobs, and summer university jobs, if you'd like. Um, I just, I don't know. What do you guys want to know? Let me know in the comments, and I'm more than happy to do uh, whatever videos you guys think will be helpful. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I will talk to you guys next time.